Hey guys, so today is gonna be redoing the mounts on the Audi in order to clear the oil pan and deal with the subframe and all that. I've got the old mounts here. I'm gonna cut these off so I can reuse these plates and uh, re-weld my anchors that we're gonna put this bar in here. So yeah, I'm gonna start off by uh, cutting these off and I'm just waiting for the father-in-law to come here. He's got, he's got all the other metal and stuff that we're gonna need to fab everything up in the welder. So uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna start doing that. We got those plates cut out, now I'm just gonna clean those so they're flat and we can re-weld them again. We got my father-in-law back there cutting the, uh, the mounts for me. Right now I'm gonna take these mounts out and get that sway bar link out of the way so we can mount these bars right in there and we can weld up the bar and get that all fitted. Okay, so we got the mount off. Now I've got to drill out this hole in order so this bolt will fit through and put it into the back there and have it come out this side and bolt it right up to the bottom here like that and then make our bar. So now we've got these posts bolted in on both sides. We're gonna take this bar and we're gonna put almost a 90 on it so that it kind of comes off like that slice it down just kind of weld it on like that on a bit of an angle so it goes right underneath the oil pan so we're just gonna get the uh, pipe bender out and bend this up okay ready yeah So we got both bends made up. Problem is the bend goes a little bit further past this pipe. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna chop it right down the center and sleeve it so that we can get the um, the length that we need easily and then just cut the ends off and roll it on. Here's the brace we made up with the both ends. Uh, trying to get this length from here to here perfect by bending it is gonna be a huge pain in the ass. So what we did was we just cut it in half here. We've got some pipe that will fit perfectly in here and then it'll give us some adjustability. So once we have that, set it to where we want it. We're gonna plug weld it on both sides and then seam weld it on both sides so that we'll have that perfect fit. So here's our pipe that we've got slid into the main uh, brace and that gives us our adjustability. We've got the corner cut off here, so that will brought up like that. And we just need to weld it on, make some braces, do the other side, and that should be it. It's actually going really well, better than I thought, so uh, I'm gonna get back at it and uh, get her done. We got the holes drilled out for our spot well, so we're gonna weld in this seam here. So we got our adjustability on there so that we can get these ends to fit perfectly. We've already went ahead and tack welded it on there. And then now we're just working on making the mount. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a pipe directly from the mount plate right to this bar. And then if you want to take the engine out, it's just two bolts here and here. Take the mount plate off and away you go. So it's been a few hours now. I decided to put the camera down because we were fighting with getting the uh, pipe cut perfectly so it would fit properly because we don't have the, uh, the proper cutter so that it fits into the other pipe properly. But we did manage to knock it out. It actually turned out pretty good. This thing is freaking solid. It is not going anywhere. There is one thing I'm gonna do afterwards though is tie the subframe 
into this front mount here just to keep this from flexing. I might end up going solid mounted on this just to give it some more rigidity, but for the most part, so now we don't have to fight with oil pan clearance issues. I can use the stock truck pan. I do have it off right now because I'm going to get it cut down so that it's not sticking uh, down below too far. And then uh, I think that's it for that. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to brace the subframe in there. What I'm thinking is cutting one of these pipes on a long angle and welding it to the end of that subframe here and then welding the other end onto here. But the whole idea was that if I can just unbolt this and unbolt the motor mount plate, I'd have the whole thing come out. But if I weld this pipe in, it won't come out. So our idea was to cut this in half and slide this slightly smaller diameter tube, which will fit right in there like that. And then drill a uh, hole through it and put a bolt. So I want to take it out, take the bolt out, slide that out. And we'll maybe we'll re remove that whole frame out of the way if we ever want to do like work to it or pull the pan off or pull the engine out or whatever. So yeah, uh, I do have the LS1 intake coming. So that should be here this week. I do have the welder here still. So I'll try to get that subframe welded up. And then next weekend or the weekend after, might get started on the transmission mount. Get that done once that's done. I actually found something really cool. So I'm not exactly sure if this is gonna work 100%, but from what I can find, I really hope it does. I think it's gonna work and it's gonna save me a bunch of time. This is the Chevy throttle pedal. I'm going drive by wire so I don't have to run a cable. But the downside to that is I have this big pedal I have to deal with. You can compare it to the factory Audi pedal. It's massive. Yeah, I can cut it and weld it, but then the mounting, the sensor is just way bigger in comparison. So I look at the number of wires coming out of here and it is a six pin connector. I thought maybe there's some way I can get this factory Audi one to work because that would be awesome. So I look at it quickly and it has a one and a six. So it is a six pin and I'm thinking, well, look at the pinout diagrams and see what each wire does. So I did that and while I was looking for it, I came across a thread where someone was looking for different throttle pedals. And they said, here, you can use any throttle pedal as long as it's a six pin, you can use it. And they had a picture of one out of a newer Chevy. Well, I'll throw up a picture and then you can look at the Audi one here. The design looks almost exactly the same, except for the connector which is fine, I'll just put the Audi one in. But like you open this up, it's so simple. All it is is just this circuit board and these teeth or combs run on these. So let's just say, worst case scenario, I can go to the junkyard and pull this chip or this circuit board off or even the whole shell, like it might, might just bolt right on. Anyways, I can just bolt this on there and hopefully if everything's good, plug it in and go. That saves me a whole bunch of time and headaches with that. So that's good news. Hopefully that works. I think that's pretty much it for now. There's still gonna be something to figure out on how we're gonna make this sway bar mount up. It shouldn't be a big issue. I'll just get some mounts with a flat backing plate for the diameter of the sway bar and probably weld in a flat piece of plate here and put some nuts on the back and just bolt it right up and call it a day. But yeah, we still need to get this subframe brace because it's it does move a little bit and it will also strengthen the mount a little bit more too to keep it from going back and forth. I'll have to take a look at my list and see what I'm gonna start doing next. And I think that's pretty much it. So uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I think I'm gonna wrap it up there. I'm pretty much done. I don't think I can do much more tonight. And uh, yeah, so I'll see you in the next video.